Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of Entitled Brat Gets Served a Spine-Chilling Dose of Reality and subsequently shuts down our TikTok account. There's been a pandemic of entitled brats on this channel lately. Apparently it's more contagious than we thought, but the spicy twist in today's story is that the entitled brat is a particularly notable person. I take that back is the sister of a notable person. I'm going to break it down for you and I will tell you who it is in a minute, but on YouTube, I guess you're supposed to like hook people in the beginning of the video and try to get them to watch more. So I'm blue balling you right now to increase my analytics. It's not, I, listen, I don't make the rules. I'm just playing by them. The only other rule is to promote your own merch. So here's five seconds of the new stuff. Check out the store link in description, only available until tomorrow. To set the stage, the creator who brought this to light goes by Smack. She runs a studio in Los Angeles where she makes various creative YouTube videos and has amassed over two and a half million followers on TikTok. Freddie Mercury would be proud if he heard that remix. So this chick makes pretty cool content, and this isn't pertinent to the story, but one of the formats that blew up her account was her doing interpretive dances to hydraulic press videos. <laughs> Going viral for doing interpretive dances of hydraulic press videos is the most social media thing I've ever heard in my life. I could watch these fucking things all day. I love them. Anyway, she posted a story recently about an influencer who reached out to her in DMs about using her studio. Now, mind you, this is a studio she uses for herself to make videos, but also operates it professionally and rents it out as a business for other people to use. So last May, this influencer, who we're just going to call Brat for the time being, reached out to her business account on IG and said, oh my God, I would love to come by and shoot with, wow. Some names are redacted because she's trying to be respectful. Anyway, she doesn't respond because why would you? It wasn't business related, wasn't really a question. It was more along the lines of her fishing to get some sort of invitation, it sounds like. Almost four months later, she reaches out again. I would love to collab. We have some killer matching dresses to shoot soon. We would be maybe 20 minutes, if that. I can tag y'all and you can use my images too. Ryder has 40K fans now and on TikTok, we have 500,000 followers. So it sounds like a few months went by and this brat built up a modest TikTok following of 500,000 and she goes directly for the I'll pay you an exposure pitch. Smack respectfully replies, hey girl, sorry we can and only accept paying clients for all bookings. Thank you, though. Several more months go by, and Brat tries once again. Still? Question mark. We have 15 million likes on TikTok, which is an insane metric to try to barter with. And now 600k fans. We would come for 20 minutes max. I promise, no more than 20 minutes. So I've been in this industry for a while. There's nothing fucking cringier than people that call themselves influencers trying to get shit and offering to pay for it through exposure. I don't care who the fuck you are. You pay people for the work that they do for you. And then if you want to tweet about it or shout them out as a bonus to be nice, that's wonderful. So finally, after the third attempt of this brat trying to book this studio for free, Smack politely responds with this. Hey girl, sorry, we really aren't looking for influencers wanting free time. This takes away time from paying clients and the numbers aren't helpful for our business. Totally understandable, but since this brat has been so persistent, she expects explains a bit further. She says, as artists ourselves, we always encourage the community to support each other by doing business professionally. We've known of your work for years and it's amazing, but as artists, we would never ask for free work from the community and so cannot allow others to do that to us, especially with influencers of your caliber being in such a lucrative career. Knowing that you have continuously asked multiple studios for free time is unfortunately disappointing. Bruh. So it sounds like Smack's not the only studio she's reached out to to try to book free studio time in exchange for exposure. To me, this seemed like a respectful response and it was appropriate to go that extra step because this girl clearly didn't have the self-awareness to know that what she's doing is annoying and all of the studio owners in the LA area are clearly talking about it. Wink wink, just pay for your studio time like everyone else, you're coming off as super cringe and we're all talking about it. At this point, if I was the entitled brat, I'd be like, oh shit, maybe I need to take a second and reevaluate what I'm doing. It sounds like I'm coming off as unprofessional and a lot of the studios in the area are talking about me. Sorry, I misread the situation. How much to book your studio? Instead though, Brat goes off the rails. Wow, I'm not trying to be rude in any way. I was seriously excited to help get the word out for you guys. On our TikTok, we get 15 million views and I had a cute viral video idea and to help spread the word for you guys. My Lord, you must not know how any of this works. I get paid $10,000 to post a TikTok and I was offering to shoot there for 20 minutes for free to help you out and you're being super rude towards me. That's pretty crazy to me. Wow, I will make sure to never support you or what you do. Ridiculous. Two things stick out to me here. No chance on this godforsaken 
rock that she's getting paid $10,000 per post on TikTok with 500,000 followers. TikTok is ephemeral, attention is fleeting, and from my understanding, that is an insane valuation of what you would get for that level of engagement on TikTok. Maybe I'm missing something, but regardless, the second point is if you get paid $10,000 to post on TikTok, what kind of delusional, self-important world are you living in where you wouldn't be willing to pony up $79 for an hour of studio time? And herein lies the point. Of course, this entitled brat can afford to pay for the studio time, but her pervasive entitlement has rendered her so retarded. She thinks she's too influential to have to pay for things like a peasant subhuman with no TikTok following. Well, you know what? Fuck you. And don't get it twisted. These Rick Sanchez clips I'm using aren't random. I'm using them because this entitled brat we've been talking about is Amy Royland, the sister of Justin Royland, co-creator of the most successful animated series in the last decade, Rick and Morty. So apparently Amy Royland is a fashion blogger living in LA. She's been at it for almost a decade, it looks like. Didn't have a whole lot of traction on the internet before just a few years ago, popping out a daughter, which she's effectively been able to exploit to generate more traffic to what is now kind of a hybrid fashion mommy blog type deal she's doing on TikTok and Instagram. In order to celebrate Fran Drescher's birthday, shop my Barbie inspired. Hey, we're going to be talking about the. Relying on your toddler to be the pinnacle of the entire content machine you build online is something I'm not keen on at all, but that's a topic for a whole nother video. So now that we got a face to who this is trying to get studio time, let's continue. She responds to Smack with all of these text messages, goes on to leave a slew of voice messages as well. We got some recordings here. I asked to come there for 20 minutes to shoot something with my daughter, and that's disappointing for free when I charge a lot of money for postings <laughs> and we get like 12 million hits on our TikTok okay. and we do really well actually with video here. And Cringe. That's and that's disappointing. That's crazy. Who runs this account? Are you 90 years old and not know how influencers work? That's hilarious. <laughs> you guys are really out of touch. It's crazy. <sighs> The level of self-importance was just so cringe there. Like now she's 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 amazed that this girl isn't pumped that she's offering to come shoot at her studio for free. I don't know if you know me, but like I get paid for TikTok posts, so you should be inviting me for free to what it's like, bitch, it doesn't work like that. Smack has five times the amount of TikTok followers you have to begin with. And this whole thing would like, oh, it was only gonna be 20 minutes. Me and my daughter, we'd be in and out like yeah, right, bitch. You know you'd be up in that studio for like at least an hour or two. You gotta corral your daughter and it takes a while to change outfits on kids. Like, fuck out of here with that 20 minute nonsense. The voice messages continue. Well, can I shoot there for 20 minutes with my daughter to do a viral video and like support you guys and post you around and people will book your studio because it's colorful and very on brand for me. They will book your studio. And then you go, oh, it's so disappointing that you're asking for a collaboration. Oh, yeah. oh, Influencers yeah. collaborate. Are you 90? <laughs> Who is this? Just the absolute hubris you must have to think that everyone you come across should be thrilled to do shit for free for you because you have a handful of TikTok followers. So at this point, Amy realizes that Smack, who has her own TikTok account with two and a half million followers, is the person who runs the studio, which is the account that Amy was interacting with. She says, I went ahead and unfollowed her, thanks. I'm also letting all my blogger friends know how you talk to me and to never ever book you where the other studio you run. Redacted also knows too, we will never refer you ever. Good going, bye. This is like the classic brainworms. I'm gonna get you fired meme. Like anyone that has a bad experience, the first thing they always say, if they're like working with customer service, is like, oh, let me talk to your boss. You're not gonna have a job tomorrow. As if berating her in the DMs with text and voice messages wasn't enough, she then goes on to her studio website and leaves a scathing review. I think you've completely misunderstood me and it was unfair for you to go off of me and be super freaking rude. I was barely asking you if I can come there and promote your studio and do a video and promote you and tag you in your studio and I would shoot for only 20 minutes. You pressed her three times before she told you to shut the fuck up and pay her. I was barely asking. This is never about money. It's about supporting local artists and I loved your studio and I was so excited to shoot a little bit of content to share with my fans because I feel like they would love your space. I can see if I was asking you for hours of your time, but remember, I was only asking for 20 minutes. I'm a really fair person and I'm a really nice person and I thought you were a nice person too and a little bit more hip when it came to marketing collaborations with other artists. Uh -huh. In my experience in life, there is a 100% hit rate of people that have to tell you that they are nice 
turning out to actually be pieces of shit. If you're actually a nice person, you don't need to try and convince people that you're a nice person. And the irony of writing it in a review on her website of you shitting on her company for not wanting to give her free studio time. It's so disappointing you're not a good business person or marketing person. You could have easily responded that you loved my account and you would let me know. What? And leave it at that, no bad blood. I will make sure to never refer your studio to anyone I know and my photographers will also know how rude you were to me and they will never refer you as well. Why make an enemy, especially a blogger and especially someone so aligned with what you're doing? Unreal, so dumb. You should learn business etiquette, blah, 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 blah. She ends by saying, in fact, for me to promote your studio, you should have been paying me. Way to make a friend, smart business move. So now it went from, you should let me use your studio for free after begging you for three months because I'm a TikTok influencer to, you should be paying me for being nice enough to offer to use your studio for free. I mean, the level of fucking delusion that these people hold in their brain is mind numbing. Let me remind you that the entire freak out from Amy was spurred by just this one respectful comment where it was like, hey, in this industry, we pay each other to use our facilities and it's kind of disappointing that you've been constantly trying to get free studio time from other people. But Amy has apparently never smelled the scent of her own shit, so she could not believe it. Continues by then sending a personal email. She continues to fly off the handle and tell her that she made a dumb move and continues to make these idle threats about talking shit about her to her famous blogger and musician friends that she knows to try and ruin her business. Totally normal, rational behavior from the fashionista mommy blogger here. Well, at least she got what she needed to say off her chest through DMs, audio messages, a website review, and a personal email. Wrong! She then DM'd her from her three-year-old daughter's Instagram account. So after Smack came out with the screenshots and the audio messages to defend herself, much to Amy's dismay and surprise, she started to get shit on by the entire internet. And what does every entitled brat do when they play a game of fuck around and find out? They play the woe is me, it's so hard being a woman, you guys don't understand routine. From Amy's Instagram story, she says, I hate being so misunderstood sometimes, sucks. I hate how women can be so mean towards other women, I don't get it. Why can't we be kinder to one another? Now, at this point, Amy started to private all her accounts because she was really going through the ringer. As of today, and I'm recording this, her, her accounts are back up, but she's not allowing any comments. I did see a video. I thought this was very ironic. One of the one of the videos, the last video she posted before going through this drama was this one right here. And at the end, it says, I'm here to spread positivity and inspire you all. Don't get me wrong. Parenthood isn't easy, but it's rewarding. Love you so much. Now, I've personally been in this online game for quite some time, and I've said this from the beginning, and I'll say it till the day I die. All these fake fucks that post online constantly crooning about how they want to spread positivity and inspire people always end up being the ones that are the most toxic in the industry. I wouldn't go up to my son and say, hey, pal, you need to be positive all the time. I'm trying to spread positivity for you and then just be a miserable prick all the time. You have to lead by example. It's no different on the internet. The internet just gives you a lot more opportunities to curate it to look the way you want it to, even if you're full of shit. The moral of the story is this. Just because your brother co-created the most successful animated series of the last decade, you can't go around demanding to pay people an exposure via your TikTok account where you parade your toddler around in weird costumes for likes. Just get a fucking grip on reality, come down from whatever throne you've built yourself, and pay for whatever service you desire. Otherwise, fuck you. Thanks for watching, guys. You know I appreciate you. Be sure to hip thrust that motherfucking like button before you scoot your way out the door. Deuces.